All right, uh, this is July 18th, 2016, and I am standing in Allegheny Cemetery near Josh Gibson's grave. Here's a little marker for it. I had heard that he was buried in section 50, which is marked all the way down there at the end of the bottom of the hill. I couldn't find him there, but I drove up this little, little path and I saw this sign. That's my car right there. So we're gonna walk up this hill um, looking for his headstone. One thing I want, um, I want you to kind of notice is how overgrown this hill is. Um, this, is uh, this is not a very nice, nicely manicured part of the cemetery at all. Um, you see that there's a little marker there of a, uh, some flowers and it's, um, the grass is kind of like almost as tall as a marker. Um, I've been fascinated with Josh Gibson for a long time. I've got a small statue in my house. I have a jersey. Uh, and part of the reason is because I just think he's such a fascinating story. Um, uh, an American tragedy in every sense of the word. Um, someone who was the best at what he did, yet was yet died penniless at the age of 35 um, without any without ever getting the notoriety or the fame or the money that he deserved. And also because he's a pretty major figure in August Wilson's play Fences, which I've taught for the last 15 years to ninth grade classes at City College High School in Baltimore. And in that play, Troy Maxson at one point is making a comparison between Josh Gibson and Selkirk, who's a real life white player for the Yankees, who is their contemporary. And uh, he says, I saw Josh Gibson's daughter walking around with raggedy shoes on her feet the other day. I bet you Selkirk's daughter isn't wa walking around with raggedy shoes on her feet. And there Troy is making this comparison between um, Josh Gibson and, and uh, Selkirk. And of course that comparison, we are, we're expected to align that with, uh, with Troy himself. Troy is, uh, was also a star in the Negro Leagues. He did not die like Josh Gibson did, but he's working as a garbage man. Um, he's, he's struggling financially. He does not want his son to go into sports. And the symbol, the allusion to Josh Gibson serves as a symbol for um, kind of like the tragedy of race in America that Troy experienced himself and that baseball did to him. A little bit later, he's brought up again, Josh Gibson is, by Bono, who is Troy's best friend. And uh, he says that there's only two guys I saw who hit, who hit home runs more than you, or hit farther home runs than you, that's Josh Gibson and Babe Ruth. So um, here's his uh, his grave. And you can notice that like um, people right next to him, their graves are just overgrown with, uh, with grass, um, like this person lived 1881 to 1947, Arthur Wright. This person lived um, 1880 to 1947, Fanny Cooper. But Josh Gibson's grave is fairly new, you can tell the difference. And that's because uh, a teammate of his named Ted Page, who's actually buried a little bit over those uh, trees over there, I visited his grave a little bit earlier, raised money in the 1980s to, uh, to have Josh Gibson have his own headstone. And, uh, and that's why we're able to see this like, Pretty nice, at least for the area, headstone. Um, someone has left a baseball there, so someone had the idea. I brought a baseball myself that I wanted to leave here. Um, this is uh, so something to, to do with Josh Gibson's grave. Uh, that's a baseball that we've used in Baltimore City on the um, on the team that I coach at City College. So I'm kind of doing a Baltimore to Pittsburgh connection. Someone's also left a baseball card here. On the front it says, uh, Baseball Immortals 1972. This is probably worth some money. I'm, I'm, it's a first printing. Say it's, it's a 45 year old card here, a 44 year old. But here on the back it says Gibson is considered by many baseball historians to be the greatest catcher of all time, even though he never played in the major leagues. A renowned power hitter, comparable many felt to Babe Ruth, Gibson is believed to have hit as many as 84 home runs in a season. Famed for his tape measure home runs, Gibson is reported to have been the only man ever to hit a fair ball out of Yankee Stadium, belting one high over the upper deck in left field. Gibson spent his entire career in the Negro Leagues and died in 1946, the year before Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. Uh, he actually died in 1947, but I'm pretty sure it's January. Um, he did die right before Jackie Robinson broke the color line. So while um, 
most people think he died technically of a stroke. He, uh, some others feel like he died because someone else was chosen over him. And Josh Gibson was uh, was kind of a drinker. He was someone who, um, you know, he he was the opposite in many ways of Jackie Robinson, who was very clean cut, did not drink, was in the military. Um, Josh Gibson uh, would fight um, if someone called him the N-word, which Jackie Robinson was, was kind of trained not to do. Um, if you've ever seen 42, you know that. So, um, and plus Josh Gibson was seven years old. Like he was 35 years old at this point, which is kind of old for an athlete. So Jackie Robinson, who was chosen, Josh Gibson was not. Josh Gibson then died a couple of months before Jackie Robinson even got to play. So um, that's Josh Gibson. This is his grave. And uh, you can kind of see it's it, it it's, it's it's a kind of a raggedy part of the cemetery, sadly, but it's a uh, it's a it's a very peaceful and beautiful cemetery though. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna leave Josh Gibson here, say my prayer, which I uh, once I turn off my recording, and um, that is uh, this visiting Josh Gibson's grave.